Well, it's that special time in a young person's life when it's Friday and it's time for the Friday Fun Q&A video. Uh, we've had uh, lots and lots and lots of questions about all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I've had uh, two major points of like debate uh, through this past week that I've been fielding a lot of questions on and seeing a lot of tumult about. One is a general question out in the watch world, which is about Seiko reissues, the new 65, 6105 reissues, the SAL, SLA 033, I think. Um, and people are getting real heated about it. Um, some people are talking about value and the price, and Kyle Wilkes talks a lot. He's well, I don't really care about the price point. I want it so I can be able to wear it, and that's that's perfectly fine. Look, I'm I'm not concerned about you know money for watches. You can just ask my watch box that, and uh, you know I've got some watches up there that are probably silly in terms of their money, but you know I wear them, and that's fine. If you have a watch that you wear and you enjoy it, that's great. My issue is always with the reissues every reissue that Seiko has done is that they seem, in my opinion, to fundamentally misunderstand their own design heritage. They don't follow their own grammar of design. They do, they make weird choices that don't make any sense. And this new reissue is very much the same. The sweep hand with that bright red dot, which, I mean, every collector, everybody knows that when you see that bright red dot, that means it's a fake hand. So to me, it just, that immediately makes the watch look weird and fake. The Divers 200 text, it's got, a, literally, it looks like it has, like it's a, has a font substitution error. The spacing in the middle is wrong. It's, the spacing is, is too wide open. It's got a kerning error. And they did it with the 62MAS reissue, and they did it here. And I'm like, I, I, there's no earthly reason for that. It, make, it doesn't make a damn bit of sense to me. I don't know why they did it. Um, they did move the crown to four, which is great. I'm glad they made that effort, but then the rest of it they can't get right. I don't know. It's strange, but a lot of people debating about it, and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more. I think we have some questions from that. I also had a lot of people yelling at me about this thing. That cyclotron. It is not a watch winder. I thought you hated watch winders. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's not a watch winder. That is a cyclotron. It is a tool that you guys have never seen before because I didn't move it over here and it wasn't here. Hide! Well, I'm just tired. Of, people think they're being clever. You're not being clever. It's not a watch winder. What? You're freaking out. Am I? In any case, it's not a watch winder. I have this old watch winder video and people, I don't know where they find it and they just, they, they every now and then people yell at me about it. It's really weird. Why don't you tell us how you really feel? I was trying to, but you interrupted me. <laughs> I wasn't paying too much attention because I was on my phone making an appointment. Next thing I know, he's busy freaking out. Dude, it's not a watch winder. It's That's not, not a watch winder. It's a cyclotron. They're different. Watch winders are in Doctor Strange when he has all his fancy watches. And I don't oh, know. yeah, when he's still a doctor before he becomes the, the, the what is he? The master, whatever. Master of some. Oh, God. Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, that. That's when he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. Any case, but I, I don't know why. I have no idea that video. It's an, it's one of my. You went on and on and on. No, no, no. But my it's one of my oldest videos, and it's, it's posted somewhere. It must be because I have people repeatedly, continually, like every week, will comment on this video, and I'm like. Yeah, but you were very open about your opinion because one of Sadie's favorite Marvel movies is Doctor Strange, and she was all, Daddy, ooh, why don't you have one of those? And then you carried on for I don't even know how long. Did I? <laughs> and she wanted to get you one for, like, Christmas, and I had to tell her not to because you hate them. I don't hate them. It's like any tool. If you use a tool properly, then it's fine. But if also if the tool is unnecessary or, in fact, causes harm. Yeah, I would think having something going and going and going, you know, having a machine just going constantly would wear out, like, the lubricants or something. Well, it, it's running all the time, and lubricants do have a limited lifespan. But, like, something like even, like, um, some of our older Rolexes. The, the mainspring arbor, arbors are not jeweled, which means it's winding constantly, which means the mainspring arbor is constantly turning, which means it is grinding away at the metal of the main plate. And then eventually, I mean, it's, it's just, you're just, you're introducing a ton of wear. Now, if you had, if you have a watch that has jeweled mainspring arbors, top and bottom, well, that's, that's a little better, but I still don't see the point in running a watch constantly. I just think it's, honestly, I just think it's, it's nothing that I recommend. I could get pretty pointed about it, but you know, I don't own watch winders. 
And that's not a watch winder. That's not a watch winder. That is a <laughs> cyclotron. I'm testing watches back there. But if you want to wear a watch on a watch winder, that's your well, business. Well, you can't wear the watch on a watch winder. You could if you get a big enough strap. Can you imagine? Big old black box right there. You have to have like a power pack. He's in a mood. I don't know why. We just went next door, and, and they had a new baby, so we were oohing and aahing at the baby. And the husband, we I walked through the door. And I was, I'm sorry, this place is a wreck, and it like it looked like it was set up for an Instagram shot. Like the house was immaculate. Yeah, I'm like I, we have three kids of different ages. Our house is a wreck, but also before they bought it, we've been in our house for a while, so we've seen people come and go, and um, it was bought by Flippers, so it's like perfect. And our house is. Not. <laughs> yeah, but like he took Sebastian out in the garage to so show Sebastian his fireman helmet. And it's like I went out there too and it's like he's, he's beautiful, perfect tool cabinets and all of his tools are exactly where they should be. You should see my garage. It looks like it looks like some it looks like I don't it looks like a storage unit owned by a dead person. What? <laughs> Any case. I don't no, know. I want to talk about something. So, I don't know if anybody remembers anything about I don't. <laughs> the watch that I want, I never got. And if you follow my other Instagram account that I haven't been posting on, then you know that I got not a real one. <laughs> she wanted a CA50, which is the watch that Michael J. Fox wore in Back to the Future. But I've been bugging him about it for years. Years. They're so they're like eight hundred dollars, and then they have the reissue, which is the CA fifty three. And you were there. How much are they? I got it for eighteen ninety nine. Eighteen ninety nine. Now that's value for money. There you go. Okay. No, one more thing. What? <laughs> watches. Oh yes, yes, yes. I was gifted from Link Edwards, and I just got it. This cool little silverweight. <gasps> oh. That's a JDM dress watch in near new old stock condition. Complete with, I was very interested to see the strap, which is very much like a Seiko pulse meter strap with a nice taper. It's very interesting. The watch is, is alive. Uh, the battery that was in it had a battery leak, and so there was some crystallized electrolyte and other stuff in there, but it is alive. I just don't have the battery for it here. I'm going to have to order it in, but it's alive. And you also included... Two other watches, which is very cool. The 7019 dress watch and um, a 23 Jewels 6106 JDM uh, SS, which stands for second setting, which is pretty cool. What's cool about the 7019s is that they were the most highly jeweled uh, of the 7000 series dress watches. And it was this version, the 7019, which basically became the 7S26 because the 7S26 has the same level of jeweling, basically. Almost. Almost. The 7S26 has a couple more jewels. This is 21. But thank you so much. Thank it's so you. great. There you are. And I'll read the questions, but this one doesn't have a name on it. Oh, uh, uh, this is... Um, it's from an email. No, I know it's from an email. Uh, it's from a person. It is from a person. <laughs> I just, I can't remember anything anymore. I forgot the name of one of the main drags in this town the other day. What one? Harmony. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. After all the hype, I'm thinking of putting a deposit on a new... Didn't I read this last week? Did you? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I, I copied and pasted the wrong thing. Go on. <laughs> At least you don't have a brand new baby in the house. That's true. Sorry, everybody. Oh, but though, we do have a brand new doggy in the house. <gasps> and he got neutered. He's at the vet's right now being drugged up. Yeah. I have to get him in a bit. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, I have the giggles. I don't know why. Uh, she got new pants. Yeah, but they're too short, so I'm going to give them to Sadie. Okay, from Patricia McGill, how come it looks like a 26250010? I don't know what you're talking this about. This was a comment on a lady's quartz watch that I sold some time ago. Oh. The reason being is that Seiko tended to make, especially in like the 90s, in the late 80s and the 90s, they would have several versions of a watch that looked quite similar to each other, and that is the case with that one, because the 2622 or 2A22 is a mechanical, and the other one was a quartz. I can't read this name. <laughs> that. 
Chapeau Melon Bottice de Cure. Hello, I just bought a 6139 6012 chronograph, so I guess with column wheel, I let the chrono run all day long and I can see something quite interesting. The chronograph time is getting around five minutes more per day when it's 10 a.m. The 30 minute counter is already at the um, fifth minute marker. Do I have to stop the chronograph or always let it run despite that little detail? What you've got going on is a is an interesting is an interesting thing. Your chronograph wheel is going bad. The clutch is being is weak. And so every single tick that the clutch, if it's nice and firm, is gonna hold it nice and firm. But your clutch is weak. So your hand it's instead of just stopping when the rest of the train stops for that, you know, sixth of a second in between the, the balance going back and forth, your the hand the, the the clutch is sliding, which means that you're it's the it's indicating more time than what it's supposed to be. So I'm sorry to report your chronograph wheel is probably going bad. Um, it, it makes no never mind one way or the other. Uh, you really probably only should worry when it can when it stops being able to push over the the minute counter. Uh, that's the next big thing is that the, that sweep hand will will stop at 58 and you won't be able to do it won't move forward and that point it will have failed completely um it's just one of those things sometimes during a service i can deal with it you can take the chronograph wheel and you put it in your staking press and you just the 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 you basically you stake down the the around the pinion on the top of the thing and push that down just a little bit and it closes up the it, 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 it tightens up that clutch just a little bit. You can really only do it just like a hair and pretty much one time, and but that might help. Um, another trick, an old trick, and I really don't know that it works as you can, using very, very, very fine emery paper, you can go between the, the plates, the plates of the chronograph wheel, and you, and you scuff them up a little bit, and it'll grab a little bit better then, but both of these things are temporary solutions. Uh, from Azizable. Okay. Uh, hi, Spencer. Can you fit a 6145 mainspring barrel on a 7002? No. Okay. <laughs> Seiko had no problems moving and changing sizes, but those things are... Uh, sometimes you can move things back and forth if they're closely related movements, but something like that, they're from... Hey, they're from different factories. Hi, no, absolutely not. Hi, Sebastian. He's outside. Sebastian's outside. He's yelling through the window at us. From A.V. Cuber, would an NH35 fit inside of a 6309-7049 case? Also, what is... Well, let me answer that one. No. <laughs> also, what is your opinion service the SKX009 or replace it with a superior movement, the NH35? Uh, the problem with replacing with the NH35 is that the stems are different. So you need to get uh, an aftermarket crown that has, or, or one of the alpinist crowns, where you can screw out the stem and screw it back in. Um, if you can do that, then great, fine. Um, if your watch, your 0009, has an A movement, an A version of the movement, uh, they're fantastic. I would strongly recommend servicing that one. I mean, it doesn't have hand winding, it doesn't have hacking, but whatever. It's up to you. What's more important? From P. Hi, Spencer. You talk about the danger. Danger. <laughs> when the chrono hand is close to the 30 second mark. Oh, no. Chrono hand is close to the 30 second mark. <laughs> oh. Why are you in a mood today? I don't know. Because Sadie's boyfriend is coming over. <laughs> Does the hand always? Take the shortest path back to the 12 o'clock position, or does it go counterclockwise? It takes whatever the shortest path is. The heart wheel, which is the cam that's on the wheel, is it's sort of a flat double thing like this, and literally a point, and it's whatever the hammer, when it hits whatever side that point is on, it'll slip and it'll go. Oh, as an aside, I want to apologize profusely of our lack of crystals. I am so oh. sorry to everybody that keeps asking me, which is like everyone. Maybe we should make a separate video, literally a quick announcement video about the crystals. So this doesn't get lost.
Okay, I'm sorry, everybody. They'll we're, be here eventually. We're just, for some reason, our supplier, we go through a middleman. And uh, a middle cut, we go through GS Crystals in Rochester, and they're the, one of the oldest, if not the oldest crystal company in the world. But they're kind of a mom and pop operation, and the crystal resupplies, we put them in, and we're like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? They'll get here eventually. Where are they? And we're just waiting for them. We are going to set up, we're talking maybe about doing, setting up a back ordering situation. I have to see how to do that, I forgot. Um, but also, people tend to buy in a uh, bulk off of us, especially in um, Japan. You buy a lot of 60 and 59 crystals all at once. A lot of them. Um, hi, Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. So, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, yeah. As my dad used to say, we're pedaling as fast as we can. From Conrad Keen, question for next week. Is your opinion, Daddy. in your opinion, which vintage Seikos are still under the radar and worth collecting? You know, the weird thing was, is a while back in like the 2010, 2011 time period, the the UFO kind of sport divers, the 6106 and 6119 sport divers, 6106, uh, 8237, 6106, 7107, uh, 6119, there's a whole, and they, they all have variants of those round cases with an internal rotating ring, and there's a bunch of them, and for some reason, they, they were hot for like a minute, and then they just went away, and I don't know why, they're beautiful watches, they're super cool, unusual, and, um, they're, they're just not what, that is expensive. I like the sushi diver. Uh -huh. well, I the, love the sushi diver. Well, the, you don't really see the sushi divers too much anymore. Some of them are pretty rare, but even those, they don't go for what they used to. It's really strange, and I don't really understand it. Another, another watch model that is just bizarrely cheap, which I don't understand, um, are the are the King Seikos, uh, like the 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 Sua. Um, Five, six, whatever the heck they are, King Seikos. They're beautiful. I think I have one. Hang on a second. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's see. I think I'm supposed to be entertaining. Yeah, entertain, entertain. Keep entertaining. I'm entertaining. They two watches. Yes, two watches. Two watches. Uh, I'm trying to read this right now. Do you need my eyes? Uh, no, it's two five six two six. Like this is a five six two six five thousand. This. This beautiful, beautiful dress watch. I mean, granted, it's a little small, but it's these are like three hundred dollars. I have no idea why they're so cheap. Sebastian, I'm I'm also kind of amazed that the seven A series watches are so inexpensive. Um, they should be more. You can get another good one is the 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 seven five four eight hundred and fifty meter divers there. They're cool, and you can you can find them, and they're extremely durable. Uh, you know, if you get one of good cosmetics, they're absolutely worth picking up. They're I don't know, I just think they're fantastic myself. So, but those King Seikos, I have no idea why they're so. I never see him. <gasps> it's the Phineas. It's my Phineas. Oh, he's a Finny cat. Okay, you guys never see Phineas. Uh, I'm from, I'm in Chowdhury. I don't, I apologize, I can't pronounce anything. I'm a shameless American. Uh, I can't even pronounce American names sometimes. My name is Spencer. Are you sure? I didn't know how to pronounce your brother's name when I first read it, because I'd never, I'd never seen the name Leighton ever. Really? Really, I had no idea. Old family name. <laughs> Well, no, it's popular again. I know it is, but we have with ladies. Yeah, I know. But anyway, I can't, I can't even pronounce that. Well, now I can, but I couldn't before when I read it. Anyway, I completely agree. Only people are involved selling or promoting watch winders will talk in favor. If someone has one watch and wears it every day, then he must go for a servicing after every five years. But people who have multiple watches should use them by rotation so that none of them sit for a year and Hi. then he or she can service after 10 to 15 years. Depends on how much yeah. risk time he had offered yeah. to the watch. Please let me know if my idea is correct. 
service intervals are five years. And I always thought that that, in a large part, that's, you know, based upon the idea that a watch is being worn all the time. But also, uh, lubricants, modern uh, lubricants. Yeah, I think they, we talk about lubricants all the time. Well, it's an important thing. Lubricants go away. It's not like you, you've got a sealed set of bearings in there that are fine as long as the, 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 the actual grease doesn't get contaminated with, like, road salt or something. It's not like that. The, the, the lubricants are extremely fine and quite thin, and they outgas, and they go away. So even if it's sitting, it's a problem. But uh, the, the problem then with watch winders is that people will put their watches on a watch winder for four years or five years or six years or seven years, and the watch is running and running and running and running, and all of those volatile elements are gone. And it's, it's just metal on metal, and it's just, it creates terrible, terrible wear. So that's my, my thing. And that, that's a cyclotron. It's not a watch winder. Do have a rescue dog that is part beagle shepherd and maybe some dachshund too. She is a morning running partner. All right, so what's happening to the dog? Yeah, uh, is, will he ever be your running partner? Here, if you ever go running again? I don't yeah, know. Running's yeah. boring. I don't mind running. I, I, I kind of miss it, but I mean. You have bad knee. I have bad knee. I can't, I can't do it. He I, runs anyway. He jumped actually in the parking lot because he hates being in the car because every time he goes in the car, he's going to the vet. Um, and I opened the trunk and he jumped out and started running away in the parking lot. And I had to run around screaming his name at 7 o'clock in the morning. Did he come or did you catch him? He stopped and he looked at me like... Mm. Well, you know, he probably, his spidey sense was going off and boy, you know, <laughs> he's, ha he's had a heck of a day. From Tommy Lopez. Spencer, I have a 7828-7049. How much to replace hour and minute hands with NOS? Also, how much more to replace all seals and how much for a full service? Thanks, Tom. Uh, full service on one of those is, is pretty intense uh, because they have the 7A series watches movements are, in my opinion, factoring in all this different stuff, I believe that they're the greatest quartz movement ever made. And Seiko radically over-engineered them and radically overbuilt them. And they've got 15 jewels and each each different um, uh, register is its own separate gear train and crazy stuff. But servicing one, it all has to come apart. And like the main bridge underneath everything that's inside the movement has seven different pinions that have to be slotted into place to make it right. They're a pain in the butt. 275, but I'm not taking any work for that right now. To do all the seals, it's... Depending, that's a rotating ring model. My shop rates on that is about 95 bucks. But the most important thing is the NOS hands. Maybe Stefan Radimski, who sells a Salachi 61 on eBay, he often has new old stock stuff. I don't know that he has new old stock for those hands. Um, the hour and minute hands, I haven't seen those new old stock in boom, a very long time. My recommendation is always to start with the best possible condition watch first rather than trying to fill it inside straight. From Keith Lavelli. Hi Spencer, I love your video. I'm a huge Seiko nut. It all started with my dad's Seiko, which he wore for over 25 years without a single servicing. I own six Seikos and love them all. My most recent purchase was an SRP 777 Turtle reissue with the 4R36 movement. I've heard conflicting reviews about this movement. I own a 1995 XKX007 that has never had an issue, never had it serviced either. It has the 7S26 movement. It's a solid watch. I'm concerned with my latest purchase and the 4R36. What's your opinion? Well, your 1995? Yeah. 1995 SKX, that has the 7S26. 26A movement. I, 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 it's one of the greatest movements Seiko ever made. Um, the 7S26A, they're just, they're amazingly, they're, they're durable and they're accurate. After service, they'll cruise at like 280 for amplitude with like zero beat error. They're, um, they're beautiful, beautiful movements. They're the best of the best. Um, and everything went wrong when Seiko went to the Bs and then the Cs. Uh, and the, the 4R and 6Rs 
are those C-type movements. We see a lot of them that have problems. Uh, they have this sort of weird and finicky, gremlin-y sort of nature. When I have taken them apart and serviced them, even like brand new movements out uh, in brand new watches show these problems with amplitude issues and all kinds of weird stuff. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. When I have gone in and looked at it... I'm sorry, I'm going to make a noise. When we've gone in and looked at it, I have found all kinds of lubrication problems. Hmm. Under lubrication, yeah. over lubrication, yeah. incorrect lubrication. And when I have serviced yeah. those yeah. movements and lubricated them correctly, they're, they're, they run pretty geesy. So it's a QC issue, I believe, more than a quality issue. But that 7S26A movement you have, and you, boy, that's a great movement. From William Stalvey. Spencer, you love that green sweater. That's why I I've been laughing. I do love this green sweater. I love everything about it. I love the color. I love the fabric. I love the sort of the, the sort of the feel of it, sort of the silkiness of it. I love the sizing on me. I think it's great. It, it doesn't get caught in anything. It's not too long. It's not too short. If I, seriously, if I could have, if I could get 14 sweaters of this in maybe a few different shades, I'd wear one every day. Even when it's 100 degrees out? No. Anyway, you do a great job. Told a major league vintage guy about your service and how detail oriented your work is. I'd much rather have two original 6105 versus one new Seiko 6105 reissue. Me too. If they had gotten the kerning right, if they'd gotten the hands right, if they if they had if, if they'd got if they'd done things right, I would I'd take one of the new ones, but I'm with you. I mean I'd love to have one of the new, you know, 8L movement powered pieces. I think that'd be cool, but it's not going to happen. I'm waiting for, I don't know if Sadie's staying for a debate. Or no, not. she's got debate, I thought. I don't know, but she might bust down the door. Oh, goody. From Jose F. Gonzalez. If you want to know what will happen with limited edition reissue watches, you just have to look at the guitar market. They will drive the original model prices up into the real of the absurd, and the reissues will maintain value at best if mint, and they're all mint in the box, so no points for rarity there. The examples that go into the secondhand market will float there for a long time, mainly because original owners trying to get rid of them will not want to take a hit on the huge amount of money they forked out originally, and the second buyer won't pay for full or near full list price. Uh, yeah, I agree, um, and I have, I have yet to see any of the reissues, any of them, climb in value. Even the year 2000 reissues from almost 20 years ago, you can still find them, and they're, they're pretty affordable. The, the grandfather tuna ones, those are kind of mm -hmm. harder to find, but I mean, I just, I don't see any kind of price increase for, for a, a value consideration. I don't think they're a good investment. Uh, just as another thing, I mean, there was the reissue Hamiltons uh, that just came out. Their, their, their auto chrono reissues that came out a couple of years ago. They were about, they were four grand. They were, but they were like, they were really expensive. They were like at 42, 4,500 when they came out. And Sabrina was like, well, if you think they're cool, maybe you, because I was really lusting after one. And I looked at it and I'm like, I'm just not going to do it. And man, they are up for sale all the time. Like even on relatively pla places that people don't know about, like the watch exchange subreddit. It's literally watch exchange. It's on Reddit. And there I've seen one of those reissues, those Hamilton reissues up for sale. I swear to God, at least once a week. Uh, and their, their prices are dropping into the teens, into the teens. This is a watch that was $4,500. And I could, there's one on there right now. I could buy it for $1,600. I'm not going to. Well, no, I'm saying that maybe I shouldn't say if you think so. But, but I listened to you, and I thank you very much for the, for the input. I mean, because I'm always going to listen to you. But I was like, I just felt kind of like, uh, I feel kind of woogie about that one. Tom, it you can watch Tom Toe Truck in a minute. One, just one second. From GX9 Super Productions. Thanks for the bracelet info, Spencer. I have a question for next week's Friday Fun. I recently purchased an H558-5000 at bargain prices. What attracted me to take the risk was the fantastic condition of the insert and the loom. You've mentioned loom yes, as a being a good health indicator. Absolutely. The watch runs great and looks great after being cleaned up. However, the watch has a lot of gunk on it, especially under the bezel. Ooh, they get dirty. 
JM Phipps on Insta for pictures if you are curious. I thought this was the cause for the non-rotating bezel, and it turns out that the click ball is fused into place, either with rust or gunk, not sure which. My question is, what can I do to fix that click ball mechanism or otherwise get the bezel to move? Thank you for the time. Love being able to ask you questions. Uh, you've got to, um, Sebastian. She's at the bait. I'm going to have to hop soon. Okay. Um. You've just got to do a full case rebuild. There's nothing else. Those, for some reason, those Arnie's, they get they the cases just get insanely dirty. And the and I, what you're describing, the bezel, the rotating ring, will basically be glued to the to the watch case with gruck. And it takes real work to get them off. When they're that bad, I have to do a couple funky tricks in order to even get it to rotate enough that I can get a case knife under there to get that thing off. But you just got to get it clean. And if you get it super, like if it was here and it ran through all of like the hot ultrasonic bath and after a hand cleaning, it's possible that that ball bearing would free up. I've never seen one fully, fully seized. It's like sometimes on like 6105s, I'll see them where they're like not only seized in place, but the top has rusted off flat. And you can sometimes drill those out, but it's that's kind of touchy. But with, I've, I've never seen that happen with an Arnie. Uh, it just needs a, a deep, deep, deep cleaning, and then hopefully it'll come do, come, come free up, and that'll be it. That's it for questions, really, this week. Um, you know, and I don't know. That's really about it, unless you had anything else. No, I have to go get Willow. Thank you again for the watches. It's very interesting stuff. I'll get it cleaned up, and and, and she'll put it on her Instagram. And I don't know. That's about it. It's been another busy week. God, it's another busy week. I don't know when I'm going to be able to start taking jobs again. It's like I just keep pushing back the date because it's like I have, I guess I've gotten down about half of my workload. Isn't that what you told me? Something like that. I've, I've since stopping work, I've gotten, I've stopping killed it. Stopping taking work. Stopping taking work. I've, take, I've gotten down about 50%. Uh, I still have a lot of work ahead of me, but um, I don't know, see where it's going to go. That's it. Happy Friday, and we'll see if we can pull up some good stuff this coming weekend. And I don't know, man, that's really about it. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.